Hello folks, it's Colin from Trail Trash ADV. This is our first live stream and uh, Q&A interactive video, so you guys will have to let me know how the quality is. Um, if you just want to throw me a I can hear you in the live chat, that would be excellent. As well, there's going to be about a 10 to 30 second delay between when I talk and when you actually see it. Um, so don't be surprised if it takes me a little while to uh, to respond to you. Um, if for some reason the stream uh, either freezes or disconnects on my end, it'll immediately pause. Um, I don't expect any technical issues, but uh, you never know. Um, so with that in mind, let's, uh, let's get on with it. So when we initially said we were going to come out with the guide, we said, you know, June is when it's going to be available. Um, obviously, COVID has changed things uh, around the world for everybody. Um, we are no exception. Um, however, we will get to that in more detail. Um, so what we will not be covering tonight is what bike to ride, what to bring, how to pack, weather conditions, camping, and all the different points of interest, okay? Uh, this is going to be more of a, a broad overview uh, with some uh, more nitpicky details in the middle. So yeah, we'll be doing some general information about the Cabot Trail for people who perhaps don't know about it or haven't ridden it before. Um, general information about the Dual Sport and ADV Guide. Uh, further breakdown of the Dual Sport and ADV Guide and what to expect. Uh, release date and then a Q&A. This is only 10 slides. It won't take forever. Uh, it should be pretty quick and then we'll get right on to the Q&A. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I see that you can uh, hear me loud and clear. <laughs> okay, so what's the deal with the Cabot Trail? Um, so if you're tuning in and, you know, you've either never heard of or never ridden the Cabot Trail before, um, it's a 298-kilometer route around the northern tip of Cape Breton Island. Um, and construction was completed in 1932 initially, um, but it's world famous uh, mainly for the road motorcycle riding. Um, it has this wonderful winding tendency, um, and if you do it counterclockwise, you're by the shore uh, almost the entire time, or by the water almost the entire time, and you just get to see some beautiful uh, geographical features. So why a dual sport and ADV guide? Um, so for those that have maybe never done the Cabot Trail before or have only accomplished it on a street bike, um, you may be wondering whether you'll be missing out if you choose to stick to just the road. Um, you won't. You'll have a great time. You'll enjoy some beautiful scenery and you'll return home probably feeling that you've experienced something special because the Cape Breton Highlands are something to behold. Um, that being said, you definitely can't experience everything the trail has to offer in one trip or Cape Breton Island for that matter. And, uh, for those of you who have maybe ridden the Cabot Trail before uh, and have branched off into the explosively expanding dual sport and adventure motorcycle market, um, you now have the capability to make it to places that traditional cruisers and sport bikes would never have been able to make it to this is safely. Um, <laughs> now, there are some crazy people who will get on a sport bike and do this, I'm sure, um, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so this new uh, dual sport and adventure market, well, not that the market's new, but the explosive nature of it's new, it provides the ability to get to remote areas that you typically need an ATV or truck to access. Um, so that's where this is really focusing, is on the hidden gems off the trail that if you weren't a local or you didn't have someone telling you it was there, you'd really have no idea how to get to it. So, uh, when I decided to start this project, um, COVID-19 was just starting to ramp up in Canada, and I just completed the uh, True Northeast trip um, from GravelTravel.ca uh, the previous summer. Uh, given that I knew I couldn't leave the province, uh, I decided to look up what kind of dual sport and adventure riding was available for the Cabot Trail uh, and Cape Breton Island. Um, Lo and behold, I was relatively disappointed by the lack of easily accessible information, uh, so I decided I would look into creating some sort of route or guide myself. Um, this leads me back to the uh, True North trip, 
or True North East trip I mentioned earlier, uh, which was an incredible experience uh, and a dangerous journey. Um, traveling 7,000 kilometers mostly off-road was great, um, but I wouldn't do it again for lack of confidence in the trails, uh, which is a shame because the experience was incredible. Um, but there were some big takeaways from that trip, um, with the most important takeaways being on the slide in front of you right now. Um, so remote riding is dangerous, no, no matter what way you cut it. Um, if you've got no cell reception or you've got no one near you, it's, there's the potential for things to go wrong. Um, geography changes in the blink of an eye. You get one rainstorm up in the highlands or even down in the Annapolis Valley here where I live, um, and the trails really take on a whole new look. Um, you can have a beautiful trail and you get a huge rainstorm, and next thing you know, you're riding on a riverbed. Um, and the last and most important thing for me personally is keeping the route up to date is just as important as getting it released in the first place. Um, there's nothing worse than getting, you know, out into a remote area and it not being what you were initially informed uh, that it was going to be. So if you can see if the quality is good in the video, you'll see these two bridges out. Um, at risk of sounding harsh, um, I'll say right now that this is not an all, at all a criticism to the organizers of the True Northeast route. Um, that route was released years before I'd ridden it, um, it and it showed. Um, GPS routes took me hundreds of kilometers into remote Quebec wilderness, as I expected, uh, but many of the routes were inaccurate or had significantly changed. Um, at one point, I'd spent about 12 hours trying to get it through a 100-kilometer uh, section with five or six bridges that were all washed out, um, and two of them are in front of you now. So let's avoid that if we can. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're going to do that as a community. So the idea. So again, the True Northeast experience provided quite a bit of insight into what makes a good guide and what makes a bad guide. Okay. Um, we're going to keep things simple to start uh, with a single route that'll take you from the causeway in Port Hawkesbury all the way to Meat Cove and back again um, with minimal backtracking. There's almost no backtracking um, and almost no sections of the Cabot's trail are skipped. Um, there are lots of hidden gems along the way. Um, just one sec here, guys. Lost my, lost my spot. Um, so... Given that many people who will be tackling this will be traveling across probably more than one province um, and likely moto camping, we wanted to make sure the initial route is achievable for anyone riding a fully loaded ADV or dual sport bike. Um, small displacement and lightweight dual sport riders should expect more challenges in 2022 um, as the COVID pandemic didn't allow the scouting and inclusion of more technical tracks this year. Um, so, um, yeah, and given that we're not a company providing this for profit, we wanted to allow this guide to evolve as the trails, the rules, and the riders did as well. Um, this will be provided for free. Uh, there's no intention of ever making this for profit. Um, and it will be provided for free with the expectation that riders will be proactive in providing feedback to us for continual improvement of the guide um, and to keep other riders safe. Um, that's that's the big thing. We want to keep everybody safe with this. Um, and on that note, keeping tracks up to date will be a shared responsibility. Uh, this truly, I, I believe, this belongs to all of us. This this doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to Trail Trash. It's for the world. Um, so just consider us the caretaker of the guide um, and expect that we will make changes as we receive feedback from you. Okay. Okay, so the guide itself, um, it's 673 kilometers. Um, there's currently nine points of interest. Um, a lot ended up cut out this time just because of uh, accessibility issues with particular trails, like uh, huge washouts or bridges being gone, that kind of stuff. Um, there are two optional routes for those who are looking for a challenge. Um, and there's two additional routes that are extremely difficult. Um, and I think one of them we had five, four or five of us go and only one made it to the end. Um, so those ones should only be attempted on a small dual sport. I'm not sure if I'll include those yet. 
time will tell, feedback will tell, uh, and be the ultimate determining factor there. So uh, let's talk quickly just about how this is going to be organized in Google Maps. Um, so when I send out the link, when this is released, it's just going to be a link that goes out and everything's going to be there. So when you open the guide or the, the map, um, it'll have a number of categories on the left-hand side with points of interest being one of them. When you click on a particular point of interest, it'll provide you pictures and a video of the point of interest itself. And if you access the video on the Trail Trash ADV YouTube channel, it will have a link to take you back to the POI on the map. Um, it's more complicated to explain than it actually is to use. Um, and the GPX tracks are readily, readily available for download via Google Drive. Uh, there, there shouldn't be any issues with anybody being able to access this. Um, again, it's more complicated to explain than it is to actually access. So uh, who's ready for a release date? Sorry, I'm late. Can you start again? <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what, you just let me know if you have any questions at the end, um, just get them all queued up. And even if you want to throw them in the chat box right now, uh, that would be, uh, that'd be great. I'll, I'll, I'll get to them all eventually. Okay. So yes, the release date. Um, first things first, I didn't create these images, uh, all credits to the respective owners. So yes, COVID-19 has delayed the release of the guide. Um, the 12 days I had booked off for vacation in May were meant to be used to ride the route once more before release and ensure that it's safe for everybody uh, and that it would be available during peak riding season. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, Nova Scotia is slowly opening back up, so as soon as I can get to Cape Breton and ride it again, uh, the guide will be released um, almost immediately. Uh, all the filming's done, um, all the routes are made, it's just a matter of getting up there and doing it one last time. Um, for those of you in Nova Scotia, uh, you'll be able to travel to complete the guide as soon as it's released, most likely, um, as travel restrictions within the province should be eliminated on June 16th. Um, for those of you who reside in Atlantic Canada, so New Brunswick, PEI, uh, I believe Newfoundland's included in there too, Nova Scotia, um, you, sh you should be able to visit and ride without self-isolating as early as June 30th. Um, as for everybody else, it will likely be at least September or later uh, before travel into the province is allowed. But this is all subject to change based on public health recommendations and likely uh, vaccination status, um, both provincial statistics in terms of vaccination status and personal vaccination status, okay? Um, so again, the release date, when can you actually expect to have the guide available to view? Um, I always go with worst case scenario when providing timelines. And with that in mind, I would expect it to be available and accessible in mid to late July. Um, again, I'm giving you the worst case scenario, uh, but I just want to keep everybody's expectations in check. Um, it's easier to uh, release it early than it is to release it late and then apologize. So we'll, we'll go with that route and hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be beneficial for everybody. So, um, when it comes to actually writing the guide when it's released, there, I'm positive somebody will run into somebody somewhere saying, hey, you can't be here. Now, while we made a, a, every effort that we could to make sure that we were permitted, permitted to travel these routes, things do change, okay? Um, the housing market here is crazy, so everybody's buying up land and, you know, who knows? So if you experience any issues, apologize, throw us under the bus, okay, um, and provide our contact information to that person so that we can uh, rectify any issues that, that may be there, okay? Um, whether that's excluding the route or doing a bypass or just getting, you know, permission from them to, to use it in the future. Okay, um, and our uh, email is there, trailtrashadv at outlook.com. So like I said, it'll be short and sweet. Um, at this time, I'll take any questions that anybody viewing may have. Um, as I mentioned before, there's approximately a 10 to 30 second delay between when I speak and when you guys will actually see it. Um, if for some reason I can't answer a question you have, I will find the answer and get back to you.
Yeah, so Ben, uh, it will be in a GPX file format. Um, all the the points of interest and the actual GPX file itself should be uh, in just one file. It's not like you're going to have to get, you know, 10 different GPX files for individual points of interest or anything like that. It should all be in one one bit or one file, rather. Any other questions from anybody? Um, I know it was pretty fast and furious, um, and there's not a whole lot of... Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm excited to have um, you guys check the trails out. Um, I, I really want this to be a living, breathing, dynamic creature that we can all create together. Um, the idea is to just give you a basis to start and an avenue for communication and then we will worry about slapping it all together for you um so yeah my my local guys in nova scotia and the atlantic provinces when the time comes i'm relying on you <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what, I will wait until uh, 5.30, and if no one else has any questions, um, I will uh, end the stream and move on. Um, yeah, thanks for your help, uh, Motocool, or uh, Sandy. Um, <laughs> I know you have a couple different uh, aliases. Uh, I appreciate you letting me know the stream is looking good. Thank you. Yeah, I imagine Cape Breton would be a beautiful uh, place to grow up in. Um, my father's from Cape Breton originally, so <laughs> I have some fam familial roots there. Hey, Brown Har, good to hear from you. Um, Sometime when uh, things finally finally settle down with COVID, we will get together for a ride. I promise it will happen. <laughs> um, and it, as far as putting the effort uh, into getting it together, I mean, it's this is uh, this is what I do for my mental health. Um, I'm a paramedic. I knew I needed something for my mental health. Uh, dual sport and adventure motorcycles fit the bill, um, and uh, being able to create this stuff. Uh, especially something that's never been done before in our province that would benefit our economy um, and our tourism sector, especially with how hard they've been hit by COVID. Um, I, 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 it just feels good to be able to positively contribute to the economy here, hopefully. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate you cutting the ride short to uh, to catch the live stream, but uh, certainly don't feel obligated. <laughs> Are the trails geared for small dual sports uh, or big bikes as well? Yeah, so great question. Um, and I actually covered this at one point here. Let me just uh, get my window back. So... Um, yeah, the, so we wanted to keep things simple to start. Um, and in keeping things simple, I wanted to make sure that somebody on a big ADV bike, you know, 450, 500 pounds, loaded with their, their camping gear coming from multiple provinces away, would feel comfortable riding this. Um, and then we can expand the difficulty out from there. Now, mind you, there are still difficult sections, um, and there are sections that aren't part of the main route 
because they're more difficult. Um, as far as... Oh, one sec. I just got updated here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it's it, this initial iteration is designed to be good for big bikes. Um, small bikes will probably enjoy it as well. Um, the only limitation you'll probably have is the ability to carry the stuff for camping and gas. Um, the gas stops can be a, a bit stretched. Um, so expect more uh, trails for small bikes, uh, small dual, dual sports in 2022. Uh, the plan is to have that all solidified and released uh, at that point. Um, but this is this initial release is aimed towards making sure people feel comfortable bringing their big bikes here to ride. Thanks for your question, Ben. Uh, random question. In New Brunswick, dual sports... Uh, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Let me take a sip of water here. I'm all dry. Okay. In New Brunswick, dual sports are not supposed to use ATV trails. Uh, they won't sell you a pass. In Nova Scotia, can you buy an ATV trail pass for dual sport? I've seen off-road plates on a few bikes. Um, at this time, I'm not aware of any tr uh, trails or ATV clubs or associations making it so that you have to buy a pass to get on their trails. Um, now, mind you, th again, this could have changed in the last six months. I don't know. If you come across it where somebody's saying, hey, you can't ride that trail or you need a pass or whatever email me or give them my contact information. I'm sure we'll be able to work something out. Um, and as far as uh, plates go, in Nova Scotia, you'll need a, a, a blue plated vehicle. Um, so we have red plates and blue plates. Uh, blue plates are on off-road um, and red plates are off-road only. So similar to an ATV, you know, you're not, you're not to be on the main road. Um, I believe it is illegal to be on the main road with a red plate. Um, so you'll, you'll need a blue plate to do the pavement to the trail and then continuing on. Um, as for how that actually transfers to other provinces, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm sure it's all very similar. Uh, may have trails to add someday too. have a bunch of ATV riding up there on my GPS that would fit the criteria. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the thing, like, this is not in any way comprehensive. This is just a bare bones start to what I'm hoping we can all build together and create something that's going to be even more world renowned than it is right now. Um, and you know, you just can't do it alone. Right. I, I, I see some people try, um, and you know, they want the credit or they want to cash in or, you know, there's an ego component to it. You're not going to find that here. I, I I know I can't do it all myself. I'm sure I've made a couple mistakes that you guys will let me know about. Um, but uh, this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is a this is a community project. So yeah, when you go up there and uh, you're doing some ATV riding, if you find some trails that you think fit the bill, send them our way. Any other questions, guys? Even uh, non-Cabot Trail-related questions? Okay, one from Jeremy here. Uh, hey, buddy, long time no see. This is one of my relatives, actually. Um, so there's a lot of restrictions in the Halifax Regional Municipality. Uh, will I have sections for HRM specifically? Um, no. Um, ideally, by the time this is released, there should be no restrictions in the province at all. Um, the Atlantic bubble probably won't be opened up yet, um, but I suspect by the time I get the chance to release this to everybody, um, you'll be able to move about freely in Nova Scotia. Now, of course, with public health and COVID, if things flare back up, that might be a different story. Um, all I can do is go by the, uh, the, the four step, five step plan that uh, our premier has released. <laughs> uh, you mentioned carrying gas. Is it possible to do a route without extra gas or we should we plan for additional gas? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, 
so when I did the route, I did it on a V-Strom 650, uh, and that has about a 20 liter uh, fuel capacity that can do around 400 kilometers if you're real easy on it. Um, so I didn't actually map out all the fuel stops yet. I will do that, and I will let you know, you know, whether it's 200 kilometers max range or 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 what the deal is. Um, I can't see you having to go more than 200 kilometers without a fuel stop, um, but I will double check on that and get back to you and make sure that it is well defined and well uh, well placed in the guide so that you can see that. Great question, thank you. Actually, I'm just going to pull up the map right here and take a quick look. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, the gas stops will be time of day dependent. Okay, uh, so if you miss if you miss the opening hours of that particular gas station, it may affect how far you have to go. Um, so, but based on what I'm looking at the map right now there should be no sections longer than 200 kilometers that you have to tackle. And thanks everybody for tuning in. It's, uh, it's great to see so many, uh, so many people engaged. Hey guys, uh, any questions you have even, uh, just about, the channel or me or whatever you just just throw it at me <laughs> hello from monkey town don't know what that means, but hello. <laughs> okay, two questions. Great. Back to back. Um, how is the 1980 Yamaha rebuild going? Um, so for those who don't know, I've been working on rebuilding a 1980 Yamaha XT250. Um, it is back together. It is running. I've had it out for a couple of rides. Um, I've got some real bad vacuum leaks somewhere that I'm not quite sure about, but it no longer leaks oil. So uh, progress has been made and uh, parts are on the way to hopefully fix that vacuum leak. Um, what's your camera setup? So, oh, from Moncton. Hello from Moncton. <laughs> um, what's your camera setup? So, uh, normally we just run a couple GoPro Hero 7s. Um, at this point in time, though, we only had one GoPro Hero 7, and this whole thing is filmed on one GoPro. Um, and this is the other thing, like, we're not cinematographers. Uh, we're, I don't even know what you'd call us. I'm sure someone could fi fi find a creative title that isn't totally insulting. Um, <laughs> amateurs, perhaps. Um, but uh, yeah, just one GoPro was that's what we filmed the whole thing on. Uh, one 128 gigabyte USB uh, micro USB card. Um, but uh, it, it Cape Breton made making the videos easy. There's so much there that's beautiful, um, and really with a little color correction, you can really make things pop. Um, yeah, it's. It's just one GoPro. That's it. And I think you guys will be, uh, I think you guys will be pretty happy with what you get to see with with just the one GoPro. Beginner, yeah. <laughs> If uh, I missed anybody in the chat, uh, please uh, shoot another message in there. Um, I'm pretty sure everything's popping up, but I can't be entirely sure with the internet. Um. Uh, 
And just like before, if uh, nobody has any more questions, um, I'll cut the stream off at 5.40. Um, and if someone comes up with another question in that time, we'll just push it back another five minutes just to uh, give people a chance to catch up on the, the stream because some people may be watching it uh, earlier uh, as it buffers. They may be watching the beginning of the uh, the slideshow. So. There were a couple messages, but they were from me. Okay. Uh, no more trolling. Pre pre I appreciate the uh, the lack of trolling. I uh, thank you. <laughs> So yeah, guys, um, if things work out in the Atlantic bubble, if anybody tuning in is local, uh, oh, okay, great, we got more questions, uh, but I'll just finish this first. If anybody tuning in is local and, um, you know, the release of the guide coincides with a period of time that you have off and you want to come ride it and you want to be filmed doing it, if I can be there and ride with you, I will. I'll film it. We'll put it on YouTube. It'll be great. Um, just let me know. Okay. Uh, so how long have I been riding big ADVs off-road, and how did you become such a masochist? <laughs> um, let me think here. So I became a paramedic in 2016, I believe, um, and it was very shortly after that. Uh, I got one of my first paychecks, and uh, I went and bought an F650, a BMW F650 GS. Um, so I guess I've been doing this five years now. Um, I certainly wasn't good at it. Uh, in retrospect, I would have started on a much smaller, cheaper, you know, cheaper maintained bike. Um, as for how I became such a masochist, I, I, I just. I don't know. I'm just a sucker for punishment, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> I need to bring my GoPro Hero 3 out of the drawer. It's stuck in... Oh, sorry. You need to bring your GoPro Hero 3 out of the drawer. It's stuck in and start filming your own vids. Yeah, it's... It, so, I'll talk a little bit about, about that, actually. Uh, the video editing software I used is called... VSDC, uh, and there's a free version of it too. Uh, if you want to go premium, uh, there's, it's only like 20 bucks a year. Um, but you can do some really great stuff just with the, uh, the Hero 3 uh, Silver or Hero 3 White um, because there's it's a relatively flat profile with the old ones, and you can really do some great color correction and sharpening and make things pop um, and make things look quite close to what you'll get with a Hero 7 Black just without any editing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd highly encourage that to play around with it, get good at it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, do I know of any organized Cape Breton rides this year? Uh, yeah, actually. So the Nova Scotia dual sport riders Facebook group, and there's a couple of them. Um, there's, I think it's, there's Nova Scotia dual sport and then there's Nova Scotia dual sport riders. I think it's the dual sport riders group. Um, they're planning on having a season opener in Cape Breton. Uh, I'm not sure what all the details are. I think it's late June they're planning on. But again, the first season opener didn't happen because of COVID. So it's all subject to change. Um, but if you're interested in that, uh, check out them on Facebook. It's the Nova Scotia Dual Sport Riders Group. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a so I'm just uh, looking here. There's a couple of guys that have some uh, some. Oh, what? Well, I I don't want to call them knockoffs, but you know, they're not a knockoff because a lot of the uh, cameras out there now are just as good as GoPros. Um, and if you can find one, uh, the big thing is finding good image stabilization. If you can find one with good image image stabilization, uh, like Jeff, I can't remember what he uses, but. 
when I brought bought the Hero Seven Black, it was around four to five hundred bucks initially, and at the same time, he was able to get this knockoff, not knockoff brand um, for around two hundred bucks. And the image stabilization is is excellent. Uh, if you're interested in that uh, that particular camera, I can get that information for you. Um, so, Jeremy, where you were mentioning uh, if I knew about any organized rides in Cape Breton this year, um, on that same note, uh, we haven't published anything yet or put it out on Facebook or Instagram, but we are planning on doing some riding uh, in the valley, um, especially with the uh, the Trail Trash Tracks uh, playlist that we have. Um, there's some really great spots, uh, like there's a whole trail system that takes you right up to Lockett Vineyards, and then you can get right back on the trail system and keep on riding. Um, so the plan is to do something like that. It may even be a Luckett Vineyards trip um, and, and just try and get more of the community together once uh, once COVID settles down. Because it has been a long time since we've all been able to uh, to get out and ride and network and that kind of stuff. Uh, what do you guys use for comms and are you satisfied with it? Uh, we got a... Cardo Freecom 2s and they blow. Um, well, let me show you what I use for comms. Actually, just one sec. Let's make sure I got enough cord here. So, um, what we use for com comms is the uh, Cardo Freecom 4s. Um, this is the unit that just pops right off the helmet once you uh, once you get the whole rig installed. Um, we got a two pack at the time. Uh, they were relatively affordable, and that was a couple of years ago. Uh, battery life is great. They last for about, oh, geez. Like when I go on trips, I like the Cape Breton trip to scout for this, it was like seven days. And I think I charged it once, and Colin and I were talking to each other the whole time. Like the battery life is really incredible. Um, I've had the Senas or the Senas. Um, and while they do work well, the one I had was the SMH5, um, I ended up having compatibility issues with my phone when I upgraded, um, and the only way to fix it was to actually get a new intercom because the Bluetooth was outdated. So, um, this is a Bluetooth module, it's not a mesh module, um, I wouldn't be able to explain the difference to you, um, but mesh is kind of the way that the technology is going, so if you can get an affordable intercom from Cardo with mess with uh, mesh functionality M E S H. I would recommend it. Uh, what's the best way to support the ongoing development of the guide? Is there a way to donate? Um, so I want to keep money totally out of it. Um, if we can. Um, if we start getting into issues where uh, we need access to trails that require a permit, um, perhaps we'll go that direction so that people that want to do this can. Um, but at this time, there's no way to donate any, any, any money. Um, if you want to donate your time and experience uh, and your GPX tracks, uh, videos, what have you, uh, any information that you can glean from doing your own scouting or your own riding uh, that you think would be a really good fit for this, um, that would be the best way uh, to help with the ongoing development. Um, if you're a local and you ride these trails all the time, just uh, shoot us an email once in a while and just be like, hey, these trails are all still good to go, no issues. Um, I know there was one bridge that, uh, Colin and that, so my partner's in my partner in trail trash ADV's name is also Colin. I have too many partners in my life. I got my paramedic partner, my life partner, my video partner, you know, it's anyways. Um, so the other Colin, uh, we went across a somewhat sketchy bridge at one point, And that was the only thing I was really worried about on this, uh, this whole route. Um, and that was one of the big reasons I wanted to go back. So yeah, when you're on trails like that, just shoot, in a, shoot us an email every once in a while and be like, hey, it's still good to go, or hey, it's starting to look maybe like we should start rerouting people. And just that is the best thing you can do. Just 
communicate with us. We'll keep things up to date. We'll keep people safe. We'll keep people happy. Good, great question. Thank you. All right, so the same thing there, guys. If there's uh, no more questions, uh, I'll, I'll turn the stream off at uh, 5.50, so five minutes. Uh, hello to Central Florida. I can tell you there was a long period this winter when I was wishing I was in sunny Florida. <laughs> You have a 2019 V-Strom 1000. Uh, have you had any issues with it? I know there's, uh, I've heard from a few people that have had uh, issues with gearboxes exploding and that kind of stuff this year, uh, which is pretty atypical for that, you know, for the V-Strom, um, but uh, I have been hearing about it. So guys, if uh, you're just tuning in, um, you should be able to revert back to the beginning of the uh, of the stream, um, and it will be available either as an upload or as a, uh, I can't remember how YouTube describes it, but a live stream DVR. It should be available uh, as a, a DVR kind of format afterwards uh, if you missed the, the uh, initial slideshow. Um, so you ha had no issues with that 2019 V-Strom 1000, only one headlight bulb since new. Yeah, I did basically the same thing with me, man. Uh, the only thing that bike has given me is one burnt out headlight. Other than that, it's been great. <laughs> um, is the route strictly camping so far? Uh, is that what you have planned? Yeah, so, I mean, yes, I planned it in a way that would facilitate moto camping uh if you guys watch any of the channel um we're pretty budget minded um however if you know you have if you have the finances and the means to uh stay at some of the airbnb or not the airbnbs but the bed and breakfasts and the smaller places uh in the community like do it it's worth it you 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 won't regret it i almost guarantee it um so there there is that ability there uh but in the interest of not providing um, uh, advertisement advertising for one business over another, I just mostly excluded the uh, businesses for camping um, and provided some some free campsites along the route. Um, but there are certainly some great pay for campsites and pay for uh, B and Bs along the way. Uh, I heard about a gearbox blow, but I think that may have been an over-tightened chain. Yeah, that's, that's, probably, that's possible. Uh, I had a 650 V-Strom for 11 years. The only breakdown was the side stand switch and all that time. Not even a blown bulb. Wow. Wow. I don't even know what else to say. They're great bikes, eh? <laughs> Um, anybody just tuning in that uh, has any questions, uh, just throw them in the uh, text box, the live chat on the right-hand side of your screen there. Um, I can go back in the slideshow and elaborate on a few things if you have additional questions or just missed it all together. That's very kind of you, giving the bike to your brother-in-law. <laughs> now the question is, did you make him pay for it? <laughs> when is a good time to ride where we are? That's excellent question. 
Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about when Colin and I, the other Colin and I, went up to scout this. Um, we had one absolutely beautiful day. Beautiful day. And the Highlands, the, the weather varies quite substantially from moment to moment. Um, so it was like 30 degrees during the day. We were sweating to death. Um, we got around the trail and then sundown hit and it was four degrees, just like that, riding back to camp about 150 kilometers in mesh jackets. Um, so that was in July. Uh, July and August, great times to come. However, you've it, the Cape Breton and Nova Scotia weather biome, whatever you want to call it, it's, uh, it's a mess. You never know what you're going to get thrown at or what's going to get thrown at you, I should say. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd recommend coming uh, July, August, uh, September, uh, even, uh, right when the leaves start to change, if you can uh, hack the cold, uh, that creates a whole nother experience. Um, it's just beautiful. <laughs> so an update on the gentleman who uh, donated his bike, his uh, V-Strom to his uh, brother. He had bought himself a Tenere 700 and saw his brother crying, so uh, thought it would be a good idea to give it to him. I, I commend you on that. That's uh, that's a very that's a very generous thing to do. <laughs> so, guys, I'll just let you know the uh, the stream I said was going to go for a maximum of an hour um, and uh, end at six o'clock. Um, so we'll still plan on ending in about. Eight minutes, unless we have a ton of outstanding questions. And I uh, welcome your guys' feedback as well. This was our first live stream. Um, I'm not 100% sure how it comes out looking on the other end. Um, all I can do is set things up as good as I can here. Um, so if you're noticing that you're getting a blurry image or the audio is crappy, you're really tinny, uh, just throw that information in the, uh, the live chat and I'll take that and I'll see what I can do to uh, fix that for next time. Hutchie, all the best, buddy. Safe ride. Great. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, like, if scheduling works out, uh, I know I joke about, like, you know, meet up and we'll switch bikes and, like, I'm only kind of joking. Um, if the scheduling works out and you can do it, and COVID restrictions have relaxed. Um, let's let's do it. Let's switch bikes. Take the V-Strom for a ride. I guarantee you, other than sending it off of Cape Clear 400 meters down to its death, you can't do anything to that bike I haven't already done. <laughs> So what I'll probably do, guys, is uh, after this live stream, I will probably make one of the points of interest available to you um, on a weekly basis, um, and that way you can kind of get an idea of what you should be looking forward to, um, a little better idea of what you should be planning for in terms of riding conditions. Um, it's really a mixed bag up there. Like You can get just about anything. You get the mud, you get the clay, you get... Uh, you know, gypsum and granite and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. I would, uh, I'd love to try 1000. I, uh, you'll have to forgive me. I, I respond to a lot of comments in the run of a day. So I often forget 
the names of the people I've responded to. Um, I know I've joked in the past, like, hey, like somebody have a 1000, can we switch up and, and try things out? But yeah, absolutely. If that's something you're interested in, uh, and you're, you're local, uh, shoot me an email and uh, we'll meet up someday and, and, and get that done. And the uh, suspension changes from Cogent Dynamics are unreal. Um, I actually loaded up the bike with uh, the luggage yesterday um, and went for a ride. And uh, it's that was the first time I'd actually loaded up with luggage on the rear suspension. And the, the difference was quite, quite palpable. Bike is all stock except tires. Well, that'll be a perfect comparison. Are you looking to do any modifications to it, or are you uh, looking to keep it uh, stock as much as you can? Mm. Yeah, the skid plate's a big one. Um, as anybody who has dealt with the V-Strom knows, ground clearance is the big enemy. Um, OPAC Motortech, I can't say enough good things about them. I, I, I didn't get it given to me. I bought it just like everybody else. It came in around 1000 bucks Canadian with taxes and shipping. Um, I used it for two and a half years, three years. And then I actually broke the skid plate in half doing scouting for this. And uh, I just posted up a picture on Instagram as a joke and they actually contacted me and sent me a new one uh, which was an improved model from the uh, the last so I the Canadian base if you go with them you won't be upset the only thing is I don't think they have one for the 1000 I just remembered that I think it's a 650 only sorry <laughs> um, yeah I'd, I'd look on the uh, Strom Trooper forms for more advice for the 1000 if uh, OPAC Motor Tech doesn't make one for your bike Am I going solo to CB? Um, probably. Uh, everybody's lives, uh, even within my group, uh, are changing quite, uh, <laughs> quite rapidly and quite drastically. So I probably will be going solo. Um, if you're free and you want to come, I can't. I can't guarantee the trails will be, you know, still great. Uh, they may be awful. It may be the hardest off-road riding you've done in your life. Um, but that's why I'm going to make sure that, uh, that's why I'm going before it's released so that I can make sure it's, it's safe and accessible for everybody. So if that's something you'd be up to, um, and, uh, COVID restrictions allow it, uh, let's make it happen. Just a couple minutes left uh, before six o'clock there, guys. Any, uh, any last minute questions, any big items? I'm pretty open easy going with the uh, with questions and again big thank you for everybody for uh, to everybody for tuning in um it means a lot to actually uh, to to see you guys all at once and be able to interact with you uh if you want to do more of that in the future send me an email let me know we'll make it happen How do we get in touch? Great question. Okay. Let me throw it up here. Trail trash ADV at outlook.com. I'll even put it in the, uh, the uh, chat box there for you. Yeah, guys. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's been really nice to actually. It's been really nice to be able actually to able. Uh, you can tell I'm getting near to the end of my hour. Uh, it's been really nice to be able to actually interact with you guys. I know we've uh, gone back and forth on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook lots, uh, but it's been nice to actually talk to you. Um, 
if you want to do more of this in the future, let us know. Trailtrash ADV at Outlook.com. Um, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, GPX tracks for the ADV guide um, or anything else, again, shoot us an email. Uh, we'll get back to you. Um, I'm a rotational worker, uh, so sometimes it's uh, there's a little bit of a delay, but I will always get back to you uh, eventually um, and usually within 48 hours. So we're just turning over six o'clock. So I will say good night. Uh, may you all have a wonderful uh, work week if you're heading back to work tomorrow. Um, and stay safe. Take care. It's been calling for Chill Trash ADV. Have a great night. Now, how do I turn the stream off? Hmm, this is the question.